the streets of London, usually crowded with shoppers and tourists. Behind me, the Houses of Parliament, the Thames, and not very far from us, the BBC and ITN. On the other side, the City of London, its streets paved with gold for the lucky few. But these same streets of London are also literally home for more than 3,000 people who've nowhere else to go. This problem of homelessness is not unique to the capital. In fact, it's been growing faster outside London for more than 25 years. In 1989, Michael Wilde founded a small charity called SOS, Sleeping on the Streets, staffed entirely by unpaid volunteers, with the objective of providing survival kits, that's to say quality sleeping bags and warm clothes, for all the homeless people it can reach. All the money SOS raises goes directly to these unfortunates forced to sleep on the streets of London. When my wife died, I hit rock bottom. It all collapsed, everything collapsed. It took me uh, five months to get from um, respectable, middle class, to drunken, dirty, quite well educated, um, rather bright dosser. Take that any way you want. But I couldn't get any money because I didn't live anywhere. And I didn't live anywhere because I couldn't get any money. The number of homeless people in Britain has doubled since 1979 and it's becoming clear that the problem is not specific to any one group of people. SOS has an ambition to change its name from sleeping on the streets to sleeping off the streets. And that can only come about when it has enough capital to start opening hostels and day centres which will cater for the particular needs of the different categories of homeless. In the meantime though, all these people share the common need to keep warm, dry and well fed this winter and throughout the year. I was sleeping out in, the, in a blanket last night. Um, like at the moment, my feet are cold, and that's what the blankets do, because when you toss and turn, turn over, obviously you kick, kick off the blankets, and your feet get cold, and then you have to get up in the end, and then you're freezing. I founded SOS Sleeping on the Streets in 1989, because I came to live in the centre of London, and realised the enormous growth of people sleeping out on the streets. I could come out of my flat and fall over people lying on the pavement and also see them sleeping in the churchyard behind my flat. I had been doing work for homeless people in a very small way, giving out clothes, etc., earlier on. And I've now realised the need for something much better to be done. There were people sleeping in rotting boxes and wet blankets and in a very bad state generally. I think, I think uh, a sleeping bag is, is the ideal thing. You keep yourself happy, then you keep, some, you keep everybody else, uh, everybody else is, is happier. We're paying £40 each for these excellent ex-army Falkland sleeping bags, which have got built-in ground sheets underneath and a hood which is also waterproof, full of feather down, which keeps people very warm. Also, we're giving ex-army blankets, jumpers, which people want, need very badly, and large pieces of plastic sheeting to cover people in the really wet weather. The committee is formed of people from every walk of life, ordinary people, raising money, collecting clothing, and giving them out, and raising money to buy these excellent sleeping bags. Anybody can do this. In addition to survival kits, SOS tries whenever it can to provide nourishing hot food. Access to government surplus stocks of meat and other tin foods is helping this become an increasingly regular event. But while what you've seen so far is the essence of SOS's current work, 
The charity is trying very hard to provide long-term solutions to the problems of homelessness in Britain. Our real ambition is to, uh, to open hostels and day centres, especially day centres. They're a very urgent need. They're places where people who are sleeping on the streets or sleeping rough can come and get a wash, get a clean-up, get some fresh clothes, get some food, advice, help and maybe even um, a job bureau. You should be able to have a room of your own and a key. Yeah, everybody should have their own room. Sleep with their own, their own bed, That's individual right. bed, regularly changed, a wardrobe, unlike some of them. A wardrobe and your own damn lock. Yeah, as long as you've got your own that, somewhere you can call your own premises. Somewhere you can actually lock some, yourself away right, from the rest of the world. Is, somewhere you can go to work and come home at night, your stuff's all lock there. the door behind you and you yeah. know that it's your place. There are hostels all over the place, but there just aren't enough, and there aren't enough of the right kind of hostels. You can't get work when you're homeless. I should know. I'm a stagehand. London should be the easiest place in the world to get work. I'm from Edinburgh. I came down here because there was no work in Edinburgh. I've been here 18 months. 18 months of that time I've spent on the streets. I've been around every single theatre, major theatre, all the television studios, a lot. But never mind me. Don't worry about me. I can cope. There's a lot of people on the streets who can't. It. You've got people on the streets from psychiatric hospitals who've been kicked out because of the community care programme, which in theory is terrific, but unfortunately they've never carried it through properly. You've got a lot of people on the streets that other people on the streets just don't want to know about because they're frightened of, because they don't know how to cope, because the hostels don't know how to cope. What we need just now is a hostel which can actually cope with people who have problems. Recently the government announced it was going to give £15 million to the homeless, but it made the proviso in an accompanying white paper that in the 1990s it was going to rely much more heavily on the private and voluntary sectors. At the moment, corporate donations to charity average less than a quarter of 1%, that's of pre-tax profits, whereas individually we give something like £2 a month to charity. I've seen other people sleeping here, like down here, King's Cross and everywhere, and it's, it's really bad, you know, there's, there's lots, it's not just me, there's lots and lots of other people, even younger than me, older, and you know, it's really bad situation. The problem of homelessness isn't just what we've seen, people sleeping rough on the streets. The Department of the Environment estimates that in England alone there are 52,000 families who are statutory homeless. That's to say for whom local councils have to provide bed and breakfast or hostel accommodation. Single people don't qualify for this help. SOS, which is apolitical and raises its administrative expenses independently and separately, is trying to help people who can't help themselves to survive. The reason I'm here today is because we need to raise more money. We need to raise more money, not only to do more advertising, but much more importantly, to raise more money to get more and more survival kits out to those people on the streets. Large corporations, even small organizations, really do not spend a great deal of money on charities, and therefore we're looking for any contribution from firms, companies, to actually make sure that as many people out there on the streets are at least warm are, and are at least vaguely well. I wanted to do something to help these people and um, I know SOS is a good organisation because I'd seen the sleeping bags, very good quality bags that they'd handed out to these people and they are doing good work to help these people who are in a bad way. I gave money to Mr. Wild for for the SOS charity for to help these these poor devils who are sleeping rough. He's providing sleeping bags for them, and that's a real effort for, uh, in helping everybody. And here are a few people who've donated some money. 
a letter from Highgate, £100 for the charity, another letter for £100 from Camberwell, and this letter from Australia. We are from Australia and were appalled at the problem of the homeless in London. We were prompted to send this cheque by a billboard in Caledonian Road, which suffered greatly from the storm a fortnight ago. One can only wonder what, the storm had, what effect the storm had on the homeless. I can't help, I can't help myself. You know, it's been that long since I see a bed. I'd just like to get a bed for the night and get my head down. Social Security stopped paying me my money because I lost an order book eight weeks ago. And they said they wouldn't pay me till the order book was returned. And when I've, I've got no way of returning it. I've got a family, but I don't get on with parents. But I get on with my mother, but I don't get on with father because I used to be gay. I'm, get it anyway. I just didn't go on my father and he just got really annoyed and just turned me out, you know. Because I've got nervous disability, epilepsy and asthma and I'm sleeping in a car park at Brunswick Dyson Club. Mm. It's just if I want a bag of chips I've got to, I've got to take the risk and beg for it. Oh, it's just getting me down to stay here. Yeah. Just getting me down. Begging for everything. I'm just not used to it. I've been living on begging for the last day weeks. And it just gets me down, you know. I'm not used to it. If you'd seen me eight weeks ago, you wouldn't have believed it. I'm all right. It's just begging and everything. It's just got me down. I'm not used to it. If you'd seen me eight weeks ago, I was smartly dressed. You'd never have recognised me. Look at me now. I'll get back on my feet. Sorry, but you just caught me on one of my off days. Charity begins at home. <laughs>